Hello, and welcome to today's video. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about my man boobs. And this is something that I've experienced a couple of times, and this happens very frequently when I fast. And I'm gonna help you understand why this is happening, because this is quite an interesting phenomenon. You might think this is just an aesthetic thing, but this is key. You know, understanding that when I fast, I develop man boobs tells you a lot about what's going on in my physiology, tells you a lot about what's going on with my hormones, with what my body is doing, what my body is trying to detox. It's very, very telling. and of course, it gives you this very interesting kind of funny symptom of a man developing breasts. So I'm gonna tell you about my breasts, <laughs> why they're here, how they develop, and what this actually means. What can this actually tell us? A little bit about me, a little bit about my backstory first. So I was severely exposed to mold. I was living in a, an extremely water damaged building for about eight years. I don't know when the water damage actually began to develop. We actually had two different sources of water damage. So we had two separate leaks. We had one upstairs, this was the bathtub. It was the, the taps that connected into the bathtub were leaking. And this created this, the ceiling was, was full of mold. The whole ceiling in the kitchen was full of mold. We also had a separate leak in the kitchen where the, the, the tap of the kitchen sink was leaking. And this caused the boards that we had, the counters in the kitchen were made out of this like plyboard wood with a plastic coating full of mold. The whole back of the cupboards full of mold. They even got under the, we had this sort of like linoleum flooring, this kind of like plastic with wood underneath it and it got under there and it was all just black. This was all just black with mold. I've actually never never done mycotoxin testing myself. I never really needed to. It was so obvious to me that I had mold illness. This is what is causing this, this symptom, but I wanna help you understand why this is happening, especially when I fast because and this is the key. This is actually an indicator of healing. This is actually a really good sign that my body is detoxing. And you might think, how can man boobs be an indicator of mold detox? Well, I'm telling you they are, and I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna help explain that mechanism to you so that you can actually understand it. Mold actually behaves in the body, the, not the mold itself, the mycotoxins. So the mold itself is bad, but it's not even half as bad as the mycotoxins. Mycotoxins are about a hundred times smaller than mold itself. And the reason these things are so sinister is because they're so small, they can go wherever they want. Like they're not even affected by gravity. They can just float around in the air indefinitely. And they will just settle on surfaces like curtains, cushions until you disturb them. And then whoosh, back up into the air. And you breathe these in, these come into your body and inside of your body, these, the best way we can understand what mycotoxins do in the body is we can compare them to certain other, other compounds. So the first that I want to compare it to is an antibiotic. This is a really easy jump. You know, think about how antibiotics were actually discovered. You've probably heard this story of the orange growing mold on it and then some of this mold falling in a petri dish and it killing the bacteria that was growing in there. This is literally showing you mold that was growing on an orange had antibiotic activity. This was how penicillin was discovered. This was the first antibiotic. So is it that far of a leap to see that mold that's growing in your house is also going to have some kind of antibiotic effect. The way that this antibiotic effect works very often is the mycotoxin. This is the compound that the mold produces to protect itself, kind of to, to mark its territory, to claim its environment. The same way that when a dog, like a male dog goes out, it wheezes everywhere to try and mark its territory, say like, this is my territory, all of the other dogs stay out. Like, this is where my, my girl dogs are, this is where my food is, like, get out of my territory, this is mine. Mold does the same thing, and it produces these mycotoxins to mark and claim this area. And it literally, like, biologically marks this. It will prevent bacteria from growing, it will stop other organisms from growing in the area, because it's trying to claim it for itself. Imagine this happening, but you're bringing all these mycotoxins into your body, you know, you're breathing them in, and they're coming into your gut, and they're destroying your gut flora. You're basically, you're taking antibiotics like long term if you're being exposed to mold. This is the main reason that, that mold illness is so sinister because the way that your body detoxes mold is it uses your probiotic bacteria in your gut. This is why some people that get mold illness get so sick. The mold is sinister in the fact that the mycotoxins disable the body's detoxification mechanism. And then these mycotoxins will bioaccumulate and continue to devastate and completely destroy the microbiome. And now you might be thinking, but how does this tie into man boobs? Like, how does this affect the actual scientific term is gynecomastia? How does this cause this problem? So the other thing you have to understand about mycotoxins is they are estrogenic. So in the same way that you've probably heard that maybe you shouldn't drink soy or, or have like soy milk and things like that, because these act like estrogen inside of the body. And this is the same reason and the things like BPA, like bisphenol A, the BPA and the other types of plastics, this is why plastics are bad for you, is because in the body, these molecules behave like estrogen. The thing is, mycotoxins do exactly the same thing. Mycotoxins, they behave like estrogen inside the body. The way that the body identifies a mycotoxin is it looks like an estrogen molecule to it and it can actually plug into estrogen receptors and it is removed from the body, almost the same mechanism that estrogen is processed through the body. So now you might be starting to see a link. 
because you'd be thinking, okay, if you've got this mold exposure and mold or the mycotoxins look like estrogen, when the estrogen comes into the body, or when the mycotoxin comes into the body, it's going to trigger an estrogenic response. And what happens when there's more estrogen in the body? You will tend towards a, a feminine personality. Your body will preferentially choose to store fat and, and hold water weight in areas where they're held in a woman's body. So like in the breasts, and it will cause this sort of like development of this, of the glutes and this hourglass figure. And this can actually happen even in a man. If a man is exposed to too much estrogen, like this is kind of what happens when somebody goes transgender, you know, they take exogenous estrogen. They're taking an estrogen source to change the signaling in their body. And this causes a lot of different things to change. You know, hormones are the way that the body communicates. These are hugely influential molecules on how we feel and what's actually happening in your body. Like they're kind of like the post office in your body. Like they're delivering all the messages everywhere and they're telling your body exactly what to do. So imagine even me as a man, you know, I'm supposed to have significantly higher testosterone than estrogen and then I'm living in this environment and my body is being flooded with all of this estrogen all of this estrogen is is flooding into my body my body's going to be like are we a man are we a woman like what are we supposed to do with the fat and where are we supposed to put it should we develop broad shoulders which is a very masculine characteristic should we deepen the voice or should we grow breasts should we tend towards a feminine disposition like the body's like what is going on here i've got all these conflicting signals and the body doesn't really know what to do this didn't really ha i didn't really notice this when i was being exposed to mold because when i was really ill i was extremely malnourished and underweight you know this damage that was done to my gut flora meant i was on an extremely restrictive diet i couldn't digest foods i was really struggling just to stay alive you know extremely malnourished i didn't have any body fat to deposit in the breasts because i had no body fat but what's happened now is as i'm healing you know i've healed my gut a lot i can eat a lot more foods i've gained a lot of weight i'm strong again when my body goes into a fast what happens when you're fasting is your body is tapping into its fat stores and it's gonna your body is intelligent when you fast it isn't just gonna like oh let's just break the brain down you know because the brain is really full of fat it's not just gonna target the brain and be like oh let's just live on the brain tissue and it's not gonna go to all of your like really strong muscles that you've been working to develop and break those down and say oh let's just use these for fuel no your body's not stupid it's gonna try and find the most toxic fat in your body and it's gonna target that specifically and it's gonna try and break that fat down so that you can use that fat for fuel but as that happens all of the fat soluble toxins that are inside that fat are going to be released and mycotoxins are a fat soluble toxin this also includes other things like all the plastics that i mentioned this is also glyphosate this is heavy metals this is all of the other types of fat soluble toxins in my case the fact that one of my root causes was severe mold exposure when I fast, my body targets the tissues that are full of mycotoxins. And when this happens, my body is burning this fat for fuel, but it brings all these estrogens back out into my body. Like when they're in the fat, they're not active. Hormones have to be in circulation. They have to be in your bloodstream to have an impact. When they're stored in the fat, they're not impacting my hormones. So when my body breaks these this fat down and pulls these estrogens out, I now have loads of estrogen floating around inside of my body. And my body is like, what's going on? Like, are we a man? Are we a woman? I don't know, where should we put the fat? And even though I'm fasting, you know, I'm not eating anything. I'm not having any dietary fats, any dietary carbohydrates, anything whatsoever. Because of this, this release of estrogen into my body, my body takes my body fat and it takes my water weight and it takes all of these things and says, oh, this is not stored in the right place. This is not where this should be with these high levels of estrogen. It takes the fat from where it would be stored in a man and it moves it to where it's stored in a woman. And then I develop some breast tissue. And this is really fascinating. This doesn't happen every time I fast because you again, your body's intelligent. It's going to target different different things at different times, depending on what nutrients you have, depending on need, you know, your body's intelligent. It knows how to fix itself. So I'm not, I'm not questioning it, but sometimes, and today, well, I, I just broke a fast this morning. Today is one of the examples of when this happened. I woke up this morning, I stood in front of the mirror and I was like, wow, I'm like a C-cup. That's really, really interesting. <laughs> you, you know, this can affect like your self-image a little bit, you know, being a man developing boobs, like that can feel, you can feel quite insecure about that. But I actually can see this in an overarching themes like this is really good, you know, because this estrogen is stored in my body. These mycotoxins, these estrogenic mycotoxins are stored in my fat. And if I'm fasting and I'm developing this breast tissue, it means that my body is like, it's strong enough that it's choosing this toxic fat, it's breaking it down and it's starting to process it and it's starting to break it down. This is just a temporary symptom whilst it is in circulation in my bloodstream. So what, what happens from here is all of this estrogen that's been in circulation is going to eventually get filtered out through your liver. So this is going to go through like your transsulfuration, your methylation, your glucuronidation, like your phase one and phase two liver detoxification pathways. It's going to, it's going to filter all the way through there and eventually it's going to get packaged up in your bile and it's going to get excreted through your bile into your small intestine. Very often when I break a fast, like the fasting is quite easy. 
for me, the hard bit comes when I start to eat again. And this is because my body has been putting all of these toxins in the bile and then I eat and I'm gonna trigger this release, really toxic bile that's full of mold and mycotoxins and antibiotic compounds and heavy metals and all of these toxins, they're all just gonna get dumped right into my gut. What happens? How does your body respond to this? It develops SIBO, it develops CFO, it brings in organisms. It's like it hires contractors to say, Whoa, we are drowning with toxins here. We need to ask for some help. So bring in that candida. Candida is really good for heavy metals. Bring in that Lyme disease. Lyme disease is really good for glyphosate. If you've got any of these like upper GI bloating and gas, SIBO, CFO like symptoms, your body is using these organisms to clean your bile. So my gut's been pretty good. I know that whilst I refeed today, my stomach is gonna blow out like crazy, like way more than, ever, than, than it normally does. Again, maybe from a self-conscious perspective, this isn't nice, you know, you don't wanna walk around like, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna look like a pregnant woman, you know, I've got breast tissue developing, got this big bloated out belly, you know, it's gonna make me feel really uncomfortable. I, I understand what's happening. And that kind of takes the sting out of it because I know my body's fixing itself. My body's healing itself. And I can understand the mechanisms behind why I have all of these weird symptoms. You know, why have I gone from having a fairly flat stomach to breast tissue and a really bloated belly just from going from not eating anything to then going back to my normal diet? Why did I get more digestive symptoms? Does it mean I did something wrong? No, it actually means I did something right. It's really important that we move these mycotoxins out of the body. We, we move any of these toxins that are stored in the fat out of the body. However, you have to do this at the pace of your body. You can't just jump in and do like a five day fast. I feel like it's really sexy and really like, whoa, like look at this. Like, oh, I did a seven day water fast. Wow, I did a 14 day juice fast. Healing a lot of the time isn't really sexy. It's just this really boring process of consistently doing the things that move you from A to B. And doing more frequent shorter term fasts is not sexy. You know, it's not like, whoa, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be healed by the end of it. You know, I broke my fast. I actually feel worse. I have breast tissue. I'm really bloated. You know, when I get this bloating, this usually increases the leaky gut. I get a bit of depression. I don't really feel that nice. But this is the process. This is how healing happens. It's a slow and steady wins the race. It's consistently doing the small things that are not sexy, that are boring, that are just keep going, just keep going, just keep going, just keep taking steps towards the healing process. If you need any help with healing mold or biotoxin illness or anything like that, and you like the sounds of what I'm talking about, and you're interested in a little bit of help, shoot me a message, shoot me an email, support at williamdickinson.co.uk. I'd be more than happy to give you a hand. It's everything for me today. Hope you found this really interesting and helpful. And hopefully you don't develop breasts like me, but maybe hopefully you do. Take care. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.